So now when we are using a mechanical switch, we're going to use a push button switch in this video. We think of it being off until we press the switch. Then whatever we are powering will get the full supply voltage as we hold down the switch. And uh, usually from what we can notice, that's what's going on. But uh, in reality, when we uh, close the switch, the metal makes and breaks contact a uh, number of times. And uh, you're really lucky if you come across a switch where it doesn't do that. But in any case, they uh, bounce. They make contact, break contact, and they probably actually go down to zero a bunch of times. But it kind of looks like this. It drops. I uh, added four of them right there before it uh, levels off while you are holding down the switch. Now, the problem is if you have something that's counting, if you have a sensitive circuit to how many times you press the button, each one of those counts as a press. So it's gonna think you pressed it four times. In this case, even though you only pressed it once and tried to hold it down to the best of your abilities. So we're going to uh, debounce it where we will get a pretty steady voltage. At least it won't drop enough, probably about halfway or less of the supply voltage where it thinks it's a low input. We're gonna keep it above somewhere about half of the supply voltage or higher so that it thinks that it is just a steady high input right there by adding a capacitor so what that does is well we have the switch open and i'm actually going to use a pull down resistor with each of these while we measure the voltage so that the oscilloscope i use knows that it is uh, zero volts but uh, in any case when we uh, close the switch from it uh, being off the capacitor will instantly charge even if it doesn't instantly charge because it didn't quite close enough and uh, the power supply couldn't provide the current or whatever to instantly it won't shoot all the way up but the next time it bounces it will move up so whenever it moves up to high it's going to stay high and uh, so when it bounces open we have a uh, 10,000 ohm resistor we're going to use here 10k and i'm going to use a 20 microfarad capacitor small value capacitor right there but in any case it bounces open the capacitor has to discharge through a resistor we're assuming that whatever the output is going to is high impedance, like the oscilloscope. It doesn't need uh, current. And uh, in any case, it's going to discharge, but just a little bit, because those bounces are pretty quick. So you got to use a high enough value where each bounce won't cause it to uh, discharge at all, hopefully. But it may uh, discharge a slight amount, but it still stays high, or whatever. And then finally the switch will settle and we should be able to hold a steady voltage till we release it. So now, usually when you release a switch, the voltage drops suddenly, like it rose suddenly there. But uh, since we have that capacitor, it's gonna take a little time for the capacitor to discharge. That's why it needs to be a low value capacitor so that it uh, discharges and that goes by how much resistance you're using and uh, whatever else the circuitry is. But uh, when you release it, you don't want it to be holding it high still before you press it again. So that's why you want to use a low value. You want it to just discharge quickly, but not uh, so quickly that you have bounces when you are closing the switch. So now before we begin the demonstration, we're gonna take a look at uh, the settings that I set for the oscilloscope. And there's a little dial down below to turn to uh, make adjustments, but in any case, Otherwise you hit the uh, buttons to make the adjustment. So for the trigger, we just want a single trigger. So basically what that's gonna do, like you see here, basically it takes a uh, picture. And uh, the reason why is because things are happening uh, so fast. So this is one millisecond. That's uh, each square, one there. One millisecond, and then we got uh, one volt. One volt, so we're working with five volts. One, two, three, four, five, right there. And this actually is not the push button switch. It is a jumper, which uh, looks far worse as we'll see. I just put it to the positive supply, but I had the capacitor to smooth it. So it actually looks really good compared to with no capacitor. But uh, there you can see it didn't even fully charge uh, until it bounced. But in uh, any case, we get that uh, picture snapshot. So one millisecond, that means it's 1,000 squares over a second. So if we were watching a live uh, feed for one second, this would move over 1,000 squares, which is far more than it stores right there. So if we were watching a live feed, where we had like one second per division and we could see the voltage changing in uh, real time, we'd want to slide that all the way to the right so that we could see it uh, right when it popped out. If we had it here, it would take a while before it uh, showed up on the screen there. And uh, But uh, when 
we are uh, triggering it, a single trigger, it moves it more center right there. And it depends on how fast I have uh, this set here. So the uh, shorter the period of time per division, it uh, moves a bit. But uh, one millisecond seems to work pretty good for this video. That's why I set it here. So we have it on hold now. And uh, when we hit OK, then we should be ready. It's waiting now for its uh, low right now. When I have it on the board, we'll see. When it jumps high, so we get a sudden uh, voltage rise right there, that's basically when it snaps the picture. And you get to see the voltage that happened after that uh, period of time right there. And here we are. So you can see we got the uh, positive jumper there. And here is uh, the oscilloscope. I didn't mean to uh, unplug it uh, right there. And a little jumper that comes down here. So we got the uh, push button switch. That's where we're going to take our measurement. And we have a 10,000 ohm resistor there going to the negative supply because we have to make sure that the pocket oscilloscope knows uh, where zero volts is. And uh, there's the, the uh, black alligator clip for it uh, to ground right there. So it knows that that's ground. And right now, since the switch is open, we have a connection to ground on the other side. And it's zero volts. I falsely triggered it. Looks like that's about all the voltage rise you need to... Uh, get it to uh, falsely trigger. So there we go, we're ready to take our measurement and there you can see we had a, a pretty good push right there. So I'm gonna do this a number of times. There you can see a little bit of a uh, dip. It's doing a lot better than it was before. And so I stopped filming and I first off sped things up, went to 0.1 milliseconds so that we'll see more detail same as 100 nanoseconds right there and finally I got a bad push it wasn't even showing bad pushes at uh, this speed until I hit this one and this one didn't even stay this is all one press and it didn't even stay in contact for some reason it uh, lost contact well I uh, when I pressed it but uh, any case there you can see a whole bunch of uh, jumps from basically zero to uh, five volts right there now, what we're going to do, we're going to get that ready, take the switch, and there you can see that it looks like we had a nice connection there. But we're going to take the jumper here, and uh, this is why it's important to have this uh, pull-down resistor especially. It's holding uh, zero volts, otherwise we would get uh, false triggering where it would go up, but it is holding it down right now. And when I make that connection, then you'll see that it uh, didn't look as good as the switch, but didn't look too bad, but there we go we had a really bad uh, connection there with the jumper. So now what we're gonna do is take a, a capacitor. So we can put it anywhere along that line. I will, uh, because the bottom of the switch connects on both sides there. And now we have our capacitor. I will uh, remove the jumper. And there you can see now that uh, at least it's not bouncing to zero. It may not hit the uh, five volts right away. And a lot of that's due to the uh, capacitor curve. We could use a lower value. We'd go up a little bit faster, but uh, that should be good enough. We are getting a, a single pulse for uh, each time we uh, get a positive uh, connection. And finally, I set it to uh, look at uh, real time. So I had to move the slider all the way to the right. Otherwise, when we take our voltage measurement, it would take uh, time to uh, show up. So I did that. We are set to auto one tenth of a second. So. We are looking at a much slower period of time, but there you can see I made a connection, uh, no bounce, according to this one. And you can see that it actually takes, you know, probably about a second before it uh, discharges. So you won't want to hit this more than probably once a uh, second or so. It looks like maybe you don't have to take that long. But here we go. We'll remove the uh, capacitor. And uh, so instant on and off. But as we saw before, there's going to be a lot of different uh, bounces there that uh, something counting each bounce would uh, pick up so in any case that's it for this video hope you enjoyed make sure you check out one of the other videos i posted on the screen and check out the links down below they all help out a lot i'll see you in the next video